In Office 365, we have the option to edit our default spam filter. Now, prior to 2017, the spam filter was not turned on, but in 2017, they decided to turn it on by default, which was nice. So we'll go ahead and edit it because we may not like the way that they did their defaults. Let's go ahead and click on admin in our Office 365 homepage. And that takes us to our Office Admin Center. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to click on the icon here, and it takes you to Admin Centers. And we're going to go to where it says Exchange. Once we've clicked on Exchange, it takes us to the Exchange Admin Center. And if you click on Protection about the middle of the left-hand side and then Spam Filter at the top of the page, you're going to be presented with what you see here, which is the default Spam Filter. And again, by default, this is turned on. So let's go ahead and double-click on it. And from here, we'll click on the Spam and Bulk Actions. So Microsoft sees email as two different things. It sees it as what's likely spam and what's absolutely spam. So by default, both of them are going to be sent to the junk email folder, as you see here. That's going to be in your Outlook Web Access or in your Outlook program. So if we want to change those settings, we certainly can. Let's say that we want regular spam where we're pretty sure it's spam just to go in the junk mail folder. So that way, if I change my mind or if I want to check to see if anything went there that shouldn't have, then I as a user will be able to do that. But if we go to high confidence spam, then we can choose several different things, such as adding a header to it, prepend the subject line with text such as spam. So that way, you know, it's probably spam. You can redirect to a specific email address. And I don't think any Anyone's going to like that, so not recommended. Uh, deleting the message, that's, that's a good idea. You can delete the message altogether. But if you think that some spam might need to get recovered, then you could choose quarantine. Now, quarantine email is only going to be able to be recovered by the administrator. So if you choose that, then you can see here that you have 15 days as the administrator to recover it in case a user complains about it. There's also a bulk email option here. So this is a certain threshold and seven is the default. So if it looks like it's being sent to a lot of people and it's probably going to be spam, then um, it has that. Now, if you wanna change that, you can certainly lower the threshold or raise the threshold higher. Or you can uncheck the box as well and say anything that's bulk is not spam. Now let's go over to where it says block lists. And you can see that there is a sender block list and a domain block list. So let's say that there is a sender that's sending uh, email messages out to everybody and everybody's getting the same problem and not everyone knows how to block them in Outlook. So if you just put in, say, the user's email address, let will just say x at gmail.com, then that person will not be able to send email to anybody inside our organization. So it doesn't affect just one person, it affects everybody. Now you can also go to the domain block list and let's just say a specific domain uh, is something that you wanna block. So let's say anybody who sends an email from aol.com, let's just go ahead and say, that's probably spam. So we'll go ahead and click okay. And you can add as many senders or domains as you like. Let's go down to where it says allow lists. So this is going to be a whitelist. So let's say the allowed user that should always get through and never be considered a spam is going to be uh, g at gmail.com. And if we want to add more people, we can say a at gmail or whatever domain you want. I'm just using that as an example. Make sure you put the semicolon and the space between the two names. Click OK and you see both of the names now show up in the list. And we have the domain allow list. Let's just say there's a, a domain that you always want to be able to get you know, email from no matter what. Of course, I don't recommend you do this, but we'll put in yahoo.com. So if the user comes from yahoo.com, it's not going to be spam according to this email or according to this uh, filter. We also have the option for international spam. We can say filter email from the following languages. So I know we get a lot of Chinese spam. So if you want to go down and say, hey, we don't do business uh, with the Chinese, so we can go ahead and block both types of Chinese. We also may not do business with, say, Russians. So we can go down and choose that as well. Now, if you hold down the control key, then you can keep them all down at the same time. We click Add, and it adds all three at once, and we click OK. It can also filter email messages sent from the following countries or regions. So if you don't want uh, email from Algeria, then you can just go ahead and click Add, 
and click OK. So if there's an IP address from Algeria, it will not get through. So you don't have to know all their individual subnets. You can just go by country. And then if we click on Advanced Options, then we have some additional options as well. We can choose to increase the spam score. If we hit the uh, drop down, we see that if we get emails that have links to remote sites and they're buried in images, then that's going to make it more likely that it's spam. So we'll go ahead and click on. You can also choose test just to see you know, what that does and if, it, if it's too aggressive or not. You can also choose a numeric IP address in the URL. So instead of a name, you see an IP address that may more likely be spam. If it redirects uh, URL to biz or info, a lot of those sites are spam. And there's all these other messages as well, JavaScript, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go through all these different ones and choose what it is you want. Down here where it says test mode options, you can figure the test mode options when a match is made to a test enable option. You can say nothing happens. You can say add the default test X header just to say that, hey, this is just a test. Or you can send a BCC message to a specific address. Let's go ahead and choose none. And once we're done, with editing our spam filter policy, we'll click Save. And now we've edited our default policy. You can also create a custom malware, I'm sorry, a spam filter uh, policy, which I'm going to do in an upcoming video. So if you want to see that, then check it out as well. You have some slightly different options in that one.